So if you're planning to build a project with two ESP32s and set up communication between them, then you're at the right place. Welcome to Electronic Simplify. Today, we are going to set up a project where we have two ESP32s and two PIR sensors. They'll be connected to each other respectively. Now, when these sensors are connected to each other, uh, we are going to send the motion detection status to the other ESP32. For example, if this is my ESP32A and this is my ESP32B, A will send its motion detection status to B and then vice versa, B will send it to A. Now, in order to set up this uh, communication between two ESP32s, we are going to use a protocol called as ESP Now, which I will uh, show you. It's called as ESP Now, literally ESP Now. So, it, send, it, it sends uh, the information to a dedicated person. Now what happens is we need to uh, note down the MAC addresses of both the ESP32s and then broadcast the message such that it only receives it from that particular recipient. We will be setting the recipient into the code. So now uh, if you have understood the entire idea of motion detection, since uh, we want to you know uh, isolate these ESP32s, I'm also going to uh, use this uh display which it is the ssd1306 display and basically what's the function of this display is uh, to show the status like for example if um, this particular esp32 has detected motion it is going to send it to uh, this esp32 but then how do we really know whether it's received whether it has received the status or not so in order to figure that out we are going to configure a display as well so that's all and we'll be using a breadboard to mount it, mount all these uh, things not everything actually just mount this display and beyond that we'll be just needing a uh, usb uh, cables uh, and uh, some jumper wires to do the connections probably we'll be using uh, male to female or you can uh, choose anything as per your preference so this is everything for the things we need so basically over here i've connected the esp32 uh, to the computer and i'm going to uh, flash the code onto it to find the mac address so here is the code this is the code that we will uh, need to utilize for finding the mac address so i'll go to tools and make sure that uh, my com port is selected make sure you know about what board you have been using please set your configurations correctly if you do not know how to set this up, you could actually check it on one of my previous videos. Now, what I'm going to do is just upload it. Now, while I upload, uh, this is just going to upload to the respective uh, ESP32 and then just show me the MAC address of the following ESP32. I'm going to go and open the serial monitor. Now, while I open the serial monitor, I'm just going to have a look at the serial monitor then press the reset button and when i press the reset button i can see that uh, the mac address is here so i'm going to copy it so now uh, as you can see that uh, I'm, i have already pasted the mac address onto my esp32 now i'm going to do the same thing with the other one So basically, now what I've done is I have uh, taken both of my ESP32s and I have written the MAC addresses of them. Now, now we need to know that this ESP32 is going to communicate with the other one. And in order to just communicate, we need the other, uh, other devices MAC address. So that is the reason why we have uh, got the MAC addresses. Now we are going to feed it into the code. So now let's look at the code. After writing down the MAC addresses of both the ESP32s, now it's time that we actually upload the code for uh, the respective uh, ESP32s. Now I'll pick one of the ESP32s connected to my computer. Then as I connect it, 
I'll be just explaining the code in brief. Okay, this is basically the header file to get the protocol that we'll be using the ESP now. And it's called now because it sends the status like right away without uh, any other third party being involved. It's, it's, it connects from the ESP32 to the ESP32. There's no uh, any other central node in between them. And uh, these are the header files that are needed for uh, uh, setting up the communication. Now, Adafruit GFX, uh, this is a library uh, that I'm using for the display. Now, this is uh, optional, uh, although I prefer using this. Now, if you want to uh, learn how to anything about the SSD 1306 display, you could uh, watch the other tutorial in my description and then follow up with it. If you want to make any changes, uh, I have given a detailed, uh, I have made a detailed video about this particular display. So I've set up the width. So I have set up the width of the display. There are, if you want to set up any other display, you would have to make changes to the code. I've declared basically uh, the display and I've made an object so that it can communicate. And here, now this is the most important part where I say broadcast address. Now over here, you need to replace the, the MAC address. So the uh, 0x cross, now I'm going to fix it with the recipient one. Now to whom I want it to talk to. So if you have labeled your, if you have labeled your ESP32, for example, uh, I'd like to show you. So if you have labeled it, and if this is the label for it, now, you are going to come since i'm uploading the code onto this particular esp32 okay and what i'll be doing is i'll be sending the message to the the other one so i have to feed in the broadcast address of the other esp32 so let's do that so now i'm going to So after you've done this, uh, after you've carefully examined this, okay, uh, you can now look at the other part of the code. I have, uh, I'm going to connect the PIR sensor to pin number two, and then I've made an incoming uh, motion variable that is actually going to store the message that is being received from the other ESP32, and another variable just to check whether I have received the information or no so if we receive it we are going to i uh, use this variable called success otherwise no okay so after that this is something very important that you understand called as uh, structure now in order to receive okay when we are sending the information we send it in a particular structure and we also have to receive it in a particular structure so in order to do that i'm making a, a type of structure and it's called a structure message and in that it only consists of a variable an integer that is called as mot mot is basically motion so if you want you can keep adding uh, more and more variables if you are going to deal with uh, let's say temperature so you can add temperature here then it has to be added to your structured message so this is how you can send and receive uh, the variables all right so this is going to be the structured uh match for the receiver now uh, if it does not match what the receiver is going to send because i'm going to receive motion from the other uh, esp32 as well so i've only set it to mod so in case if i was receiving the temperature for example i would replace this with temperature so i would set a structure so it's very important that you understand uh, this particular uh, part of the code then later i'm going to read the pir reading from uh, what whatever my sensor uh, readings are there and then this is the structure of my incoming readings now after getting incoming readings i need to destructure it so we'll be doing destructuring uh, a little later in the code okay and uh, this is again basically a function in esp now as we we have to receive the pi info pi info is basically going to have the mac address and all other stuff which is not so important right now but uh, if you want to uh, read about it you could look at the documentations now what we do here is there's a callback function uh, which is basically an on data send when we send the data we are sending it uh, in a particular 
in a in a particular format and this is to whom we are pointing it the mac address that we have written on top and we are going to check the status of it so that's all if the status is zero we are going to get a delivery success message otherwise delivery fail so this is going to be returned to us okay this uh, we are going to call it back and we are going to also receive data so the same thing okay now we are also receiving data from a particular uh, mac address and if we receive something we are going to measure the length of it uh, we are going to receive the message now why do we need to measure the length i think uh, it helps us in destructuring and if we do not measure the length it doesn't make a big difference but it would be still confusing on how to read the information right now we are de just dealing with one particular variable so it doesn't really matter but if you're going to work with more than three four five and six because you know esp32 can be used at production level and if you are trying to deal with something like that then you'll have to really worry about the length then going to the setup um this is basically for us to you know keep you know monitor the changes and then i've done some input i've set the pin the pir to read uh, so on so i think these are very simple things and these uh, if you do not understand what is written here in the code i do i i really would recommend you to uh watch some few tutorials before you come here and jump into this code okay and over here again you need to be careful about uh, your address okay that's the i squared c uh, address uh, it could change this is likely to change so whatever i'm pointing out into the code might change or might not change you need to uh, worry about those things so here this for loop is basically to <laughs> terminate the things if things don't work out it's just gonna it is just gonna quit out and now we are setting our esp32 as a wi-fi station so basically over here the wi-fi station is is just going to keep on broadcasting the information out so you know if there is uh, there is anyone who knows how to read messages that are being broadcasted in the wireless network which are basically not encrypted i mean they could also still fetch the information that the esp32 is sending out then later uh, once the esp32 is initialized and everything is fine we are going to try and receive we are going to keep it into uh, keep into consideration that we have to worry about the peer information and we are receiving the information and that we are receiving the information from the right person so we check it then we set the peer channel zero because uh, there is an ability that maybe we are trying to if we try to connect like you know uh, four or five uh, esp32s even that can be done okay so all we got to do is just set the channel now right now the channel is zero and then that's it and here as you can see the encryption it is false this is exactly what i was talking about when uh, I, I said that you know anybody could read it now if you want to encrypt the information that's uh, again another tedious process we would not cover that in this part of the video so once you check that your peer is the right one okay uh, you could start receiving the data and then go to the next part but if you do not if it is not okay then you can just say fail to add the peer uh, you know this condition can come in only if the mac addresses are wrong and or if the esp32 the other peer is off or something like that uh, one of those conditions could be true there could be other cases as well um, so but these are the two likely cases that would actually occur then next part is i'm going to read the uh, what is connected to digital pin to uh, you could even write here pir read but you'll have to get rid of this void since i'm trying to read something from the function but yeah i'm reading i'm my pir sensor is connected to pin number two i'm reading it i'm this is basically how i'm going to structure the message and send it to the other uh, esp32 so once it is being sent okay to the other esp32 it it will receive a message whether it was successfully sent or um, it wasn't sent all right and uh, you can uh, you can update the display this uh, update display is basically the function to uh, set up all the variables and display it on the screen if you want to like i said uh, i won't be covering anything about the display you could uh, watch the other video 
so here the 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 update of the data that is there it's going to be after every 10 seconds so if it is sent successfully it would be sent within uh, like you know it would be sent after every 10 seconds so you can check the status uh, after every 10 seconds so if you want to increase the frequency just reduce the time so i, I set it to like uh, every second and that's all and it's time we just upload the code i hope that uh, the briefing of the code is more than enough if you have any uh, other uh, you know uh, like questions about this code you could uh, ask me in the uh, in the comment section it's time to upload the code as i upload the code it is going to take a while to upload because all right so in the meantime uh, make sure that you are uploading this code to one of uh, one of the esp 32s then in the next one all you got to do is you got to change the, uh, you got to change the mac address of the uh, in the broadcast address to the other device and then upload it to the uh, the second esp32 and then then we are all ready then uh, we can start uh, we can just plug in both the esp32s to maybe a power supply and we do not need the computer anymore because we have a standalone uh, display on one of the esp32 so that will display the status I'll hit upload onto my other device. Okay, so what I've done here is I have made an arrangement uh, such that I have my PIR sensor here and as you can see it's not detecting this part this is not the pir sensor which, which is dis being displayed on the screen because uh, this particular okay now since the sensor is facing my body here it's detecting the motion all right and uh, what happens is this is going to be refreshed after every particular uh, second now here this esp32 is getting the readings from the PIR and is broadcasting it to the other ESP32 here and this ESP32 is displaying the output here. So I'll just give you a, a closer view of what is happening. So as you can see it's saying now once there's any sort of motion it's just going to say that there is motion that is going to be detected. So if you want to work on a project like this which uh, in which one microcontroller sends its status to the other one esp now is one of the best uh, technology in without using any central node uh, controller so advising all of you to uh, try and experiment on esp now it's it's a fantastic thing you could really work on it and uh, that's all for now okay if you have any questions you can drop it down into the in, into the comments and so all right in the next video what i'm planning is i'm planning to create uh two esp32s together and have a have a central server which is going to be the raspberry pi and then uh form a small uh you know uh, have a mosquito broker and uh, create a nice network with all the devices and uh, take this channel uh to an entire whole new level of iot concepts so thank you for watching and have a good day